A well, good morning once again. Welcome to my shop. Today's topic is going to be pricing items that you're trying to sell. Those wood turned objects that start piling up. And most of us as wood turners go through this process. We begin turning and sometimes we give something away. Most of us start turning pens and what a great gift. We, we give them away and we start making so many pieces that we have to do something with them. And we, a lot of us eventually get to the point where we sell our stuff. So that is the topic for today. And I've got a simple approach for pricing that I'm going to show you. It doesn't cover everything. The scope of this video is very narrow. It's simply how do I approach pricing one of my pieces? And I'm going to back off here and show you some pieces in my cabinet right here. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about how to approach pricing on those. All right, so the topic for today, how do we put a price on our turned pieces? This is a functional salad bowl, very basic, nothing very special about it, but it would be a good food server. How do we put a price on that? I'm going to show you a simple way that I approach pieces that aren't necessarily beautiful like this bowl here. This is from a box elder burl and it's absolutely gorgeous, which really kind of complicates how you approach putting a price on something like this. How do we do that when we have a very plain bowl and we have something that is really, really pretty? Now, let me, let me back off here. Let's look at a couple more items. Um, and we might file these under one of a kind. This is a threaded acrylic box. This one right here. I'll just take that apart. In fact, I think I've got a video um, turning that. I'm sure I do. Under the thread chasing playlist. So how do you price that? Now, you, somebody has to really appreciate this piece before I can reach a price where I would sell that. Otherwise, I don't care. I'll keep that piece. And that's sometimes how I look at um, an item that I'm going to sell. What's the price at which I wouldn't sell it or the price I would sell it? Will I sell this for $5? No, no way. Um, a thousand? Well, it's not worth a thousand dollars. But when we get to maybe a hundred, a hundred and twenty, um, I wouldn't sell it for 75, but you get the idea on that. Uh, what would you not sell that for? And sometimes that's the underlying element in selling a piece. This is a really, really pretty uh, piece, I think. It's a part resin, and the wood is briar. And that's the, the wood that they make pipes out of. Somebody sent me that, I think from uh, Missoula, Montana, I believe. Briar. Very pretty. What do you charge for that? Well, there's only one of those and I'm not sure. Boxes. I love turning boxes. Uh, I sell them occasionally. Um, this video is not about marketing. I'm not going to tell you how to market your stuff because I'm not always sure how I sell stuff. I, you know, that's another story. That's another show. So there, there we go. Here's a piece that I just finished recently. Right there. And it's uh, got the Verde paint. This is the walnut piece that I'm sure you've seen in some of my past videos. It had a crack someplace up here in the top. And I've simply put uh, a coat of Verde paint on that. I've got an insert in the lid. And it's threaded. The finial and the base for the finial uh, that's Mopani. It won't come out. There we go. <laughs> so there's the there's the finial with the threads. What do I charge for that? Well, I sell a lot of urns, and this would be a very good urn. And from experience, I know what I can get for this. And I've been noticing when I when I make something out of the Verde paint and um, put it up for sale someplace on one of my websites. It goes uh, fairly fast. I'm getting some really good reaction from that. Uh, just FYI, 
the finial is turned separately from the base, so if something happens, uh, the top of that finial is a little bit thin, so if something happens and that breaks, I simply can turn another finial. So um, those are more artistic pieces. Here's a little natural edge piece. Get that in the shot there. And this is ash, and I have a lot of ash around. Luckily, it's a great wood, and I really love to turn it. And you may think, well, it might be more difficult to put a price on something like this. Well, I turned a lot of them. I probably sold, I don't know, maybe 75 of these pieces that are, that are about that size. They're easy to turn. Um, people like them. So I know what to charge for these. Uh, just for your information, I do have a price tag on the inside of that. And I've got a price of $55 on that. So I don't know if that's too much or too little. Now, let me show you, here's, well, and here's another piece that is probably not very functional. It's a little walnut plate, not really big enough to be a platter, and it's really decorative, I think. Really pretty piece of wood, nothing real special, but I've got a nice uh, sheen on that. There's, there's no foot. It's a little bit of a wobble bowl. How do you charge for that? Well, if you have it on your website or Etsy for three years, you're charging too much. Now, let's take a look at how I approach um, bowls. If I turn a lot of salad bowls, how do I do that? How do I put a price on this? Well, I measure them and I'm gonna put a formula up Uh, and you can kind of look at that formula and pause it and write it down. It's nothing real uh, complicated. So I've got this rather plain salad bowl. This is box elder. It's not bad, but it would be a great salad bowl. Just use this and wash it every day. Now, here's how I approach this. I'm going to measure this, and it's right at 10 inches in the diameter. It is exactly four inches tall. So here's my formula. The diameter times the height times 2.5. Now, why 2.5? That's an arbitrary number. And I just work that out to where, okay, if I, met, if I multiply that by two, it's really not enough. If I multiply it maybe by three or four, it's way too much for this bowl. What would you pay for that bowl? I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay $150 for that bowl. This one here, let me get this one. You know, this bowl to me is uh, $225. All right. And the nice thing about this is I cord uh, I'm sure two other bowls from the inside of this piece of wood. But that's something that you can't really put a formula on. You gotta just say, what is somebody gonna pay for that bowl? So getting back to this piece here, 10 inches by four is 40 times 2.5, and I get 100. Okay, that gives me an idea. Now, if I have another bowl, I do have another bowl, now, I do have another bowl almost identical to this one here. Let's measure that. It is a little bigger in diameter. So if I am at a craft fair and I've got this bowl marked at $100 and this one marked at $105, somebody's going to come up and say, well, why is that bowl less than that bowl? And I simply say, well, here's my formula for, for arriving at the price on that. All right, and it works. I really like that. You can't apply it to everything. You know, it just wouldn't work for this little piece here. It wouldn't work for this piece. That's another story. That's very subjective. How do you charge for that? Now, let me, let me show you one more thing. 
that I've used for many years. And I use the same formula for cutting boards. And over the years I've sold uh, probably several hundred of these, literally. I used to make 50 at a time in the day. Let me, let me bring up this one here. This is really a better way to do a cutting board. This is a true butcher block with the end grain sticking up right there. This is an edge grain cutting board. Anyway, um, the way I do this, the way I put a price on my cutting boards, you're not gonna be able to see this. It's actually a Excel file that I've got on my computer. And I did this years ago. And what I've got on there, I've got every dimension of every cutting board I've got in stock. Let me just give you some examples here. 7 by 14, 9 by 11, 10 by 13, 11 by 16, uh, all the way up to 14 by 17. Now, if you're not familiar with an Excel file, uh, not a big deal. But it's the same basic idea that I take this measurement and this measurement, I multiply them, and I, and I use that in my formula. So if somebody says, well, why is this cutting board $75 and the one next to it something else? Well, look at the dimensions. It's very objective. You just measure it and that's your price. Now, here's something else I do on these. Uh, and I don't know if you can see this, not, not important. I've got the actual dimensions of this burned into the board, 14 by 16. So I don't have to measure this if I'm at a craft fair or something. I don't have to measure that. I know exactly what the dimension is. I look on here. Uh, 14 by 16 is $77. And that's just worked out through the Excel math. $77. Now, I have another column over here for butcher blocks. Because if I'm doing a butcher block, let me get this up here. If I'm doing a butcher block like this, the labor, I would say there's probably 40% more labor in this than just a straight grained cutting board. Because I've got to cut these and turn them and re-glue them and anyway, it's more work. So I have another column over here when I look at uh, that cutting board that's 14 by 16, but it's a butcher block and I simply charge more. And it's based totally on the dimensions of my cutting board. It's very objective. Now, getting back to artsy stuff, you can't always apply that. You know, I can't just measure this and charge something. Um, let's analyze this and let's just kind of go through uh, how many hours it took to make that. Well, I had to hollow it. I had to dry it. This is a, a rough turn piece. This is walnut. Um, years ago, I bought a walnut tree. So the walnut, I have, I still have some of that, is very cheap. You know, it's not a big factor. I didn't, you know, like this um, box elder piece that I showed you, I paid quite a bit of money for this wood. So I may have to charge more, or that's a consideration when I do price that out. This, on the other hand, Okay, the wood was not all that expensive, but there was a lot of labor. I had to thread that. When I thread this, make a base, make a finial, and thread it, put an insert in the uh, hollow form, that takes me six hours just to do that. The, the Mopani is a little bit expensive, and it came from a block of wood. So those are considerations. Now, I've sold a lot of these, many, many urns. So what am I going to start charging for this? I would say I would, I would start about $240 or $250. You can always reduce the price, but uh, that's where I would start on that piece. So that gives you an idea. It's not perfect, and I'm not trying to tell you how to market stuff. That's always a big issue. Well, selling is not easy. We're wood turners. We're not salesmen, you know. So we make stuff and we're trying to make some money, a lot of us. 
So we have to come up with something to price these items. Again, this is not uh, a marketing video. I don't know how to sell stuff half the time, so I'm not sure if I can tell you. Um, my approach is to get your stuff out there as much as possible and seen as much as possible. I've got a website, I've got Etsy, um, an, an Etsy shop, which is a really good thing. I sell a lot of my pieces through that. I've got some pieces in stores around the area. Hit a lot of different venues, that's my advice. But as far as pricing your stuff, sometimes it just comes down to experience. You know, if you sell a lot of natural edge bowls like this, you kind of get an idea of what you can sell these for. Well, I hope this helped, and if you have any questions, uh, give me a call, and I need to go finish some of the stuff I started. And then I can try to sell it. I'll talk to you next time. Thank you very much.